in the classroom. Or at home. Teens young and old are using social media. Today we'll be bringing you Kate Farretti, especially in the field. A recent study by Concourse Media Matrix, where they reported 51.4 million unique users as of 2006. With such rapid growth, let's hear of potential dangers on MySpace. There, there's a lot of support to substantiate that cyberbullying does happen. Um, in terms of predators, I think, you know, for example, MySpace had eliminated about 29,000 potential sexual predators or who actually maybe were registered sex offenders. This was some years ago from their uh, site. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think that that is a definite threat, but I also think that teens are much more aware and a lot of media coverage has kind of helped with that. The cyberbullying uh, still, you know, they're finding ways to you know, have parents deal with this as well as other teens and it's definitely become an awareness an issue so that's you know another threat that I think you'd ask the average person on the street and those are the things that they would come up with. We will not hear from student Jeremiah Manassi on who we have as friends on MySpace. Sister, cousin, 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 and 62% of them said their parents did not talk to them about MySpace. Okay, we'll just kind of go back to basic research on parent-child, parent-adolescent conflict, is they're really usually not fighting over major issues, you know, in terms of politics or religion. Sometimes those things can be more shared than less by parents and teens, but some of the areas they fight over, and maybe this is an adult judgment, are minor. It's clothing, it may be music, it may be um, you know, personal style, you know, things like that. That tends to be the area that you know parents and teens may argue over or have conflict. So if anything, it may be some cer certain expressions on the internet that parents may disagree with, um, be it certain use of language or, or photos, and it may not even be necessarily how reveal of uh, you know revealing photos because some of the research that positively supports social media actually says that the teens' photos that they had reviewed, you know, randomly and selecting a bunch of MySpace profiles were absolutely fine. Uh, they didn't find any, you know, issues with that. Um, so parents may, in some ways, disagree with um, smaller level choices, you know, teens and parents. But the other thing is that uh, it's nice to know that there is research out there that actually supports the positive aspects of social media teens would like to know that and share that with their parents because there's a lot of stuff out there especially um, well when I was just looking up online there's a huge number of you know tips for parents on social media networking sites dangers to look out for so you know somebody's obviously and the the media in general really looks at the downside and the scary side and kind of shares those stories because they're fascinating they they sell they you know attract viewers and they scare parents. <laughs> so, but overall, the you know, it's it's that doesn't reflect the full picture of social media and social networking. So, the multitasking. <laughs> activities in which he said actually you did quite poorly on some very simple tasks uh, while you were multitasking. So I found that interesting is that the human brain is not even capable as much as we may think it is of doing all the things we're accomplishing.